strict lockdown regulations have had a toll on South African citizens. But for people living with disabilities, these regulations have had a dire effect, with some people not having access to the necessities that they need. My name is Pule Mulebati. Welcome to this week's inspiring edition of Stories Untold. Today we are looking at how the easing of the lockdown regulations has offered some kind of relief to people living with disabilities. We are looking at Utongati Disability Project and how they have impacted people with disabilities since their inception in rural Eastern Cape. Let's have a look at their story. There are many reasons why people do the jobs they do. Top of the list is money, obviously. Some people, however, choose a job that gives them a chance to make a difference, like Andreas Vorster, the founder of Utongati Disability Project. He's packing COVID-19 protection gear to distribute to people living with disabilities. Andreas, originally from Germany, came to South Africa to experience a new life. As a 30 years ago, I think kind of it started when I came to South Africa from Germany as a physiotherapist, working in Soweto in the clinics and in Baragwana's hospital. Out of his many patients, Andreas observed that people living with disabilities were marginalized. Realizing that people with disabilities get less services, get less attention, get disadvantaged in life. In 1996, he moved to Mtata doing the same job. It wasn't long before he realized that the need was more outside the clinic than inside. He then decided to take his services to the communities. After working in the hospital there as a physiotherapist again, I realized I should start a program where people in very rural, remote areas in the Eastern Cape should get services in physiotherapy and holistic social attention and get the people out. For me, I think I stayed in South Africa because life in Germany was so much easier. When you come here to a situation, someone in a wheelchair sitting in a the house, there's not even a door frame wide enough for him to get out in the wheelchair. People crawling on the floor because they want to go to somewhere to the toilet which is not existing. They have to go to a bush and this kind of things are for me give this motivation besides being a physiotherapist. So to look at people and that inclusion into family and into society, that's where I continued. So beyond that occupation of being a physiotherapist. In 2005, his dream of reaching out to the community became a reality. Utongati, a Zulu phrase meaning you are something because of me and I am something because of you was born. It, it was rough. A lot of people who were close to us died. Um, they died on other problems with being in a wheelchair, being in a rural community, not coming out of the house, um, getting depressed. People killed themselves. People got pressure sores and died out of that. So for me that was the reason why we had to continue because we want to give that hope that there is life even if you're sitting in a wheelchair. I think one of the worst things we always say is if you see somebody locked up in a room in a village in the Eastern Cape, wherever that can be, but in the Eastern Cape we found them, locked up in a village because the family didn't know what to do. They didn't have that service, the hospital is three hours away, they didn't have somebody who guide them to do something with that young person with a disability. Andreas was armed with nothing but his love and passion for people living with disabilities. Our own pockets are also kind of empty. <laughs> we are not having a good income, which is a challenge obviously. We can't really employ people because we can't offer them a proper income and the living conditions and that everybody can get a proper housing. When I started, I was living in a rural village without electricity and water and drove my bicycle from there to the hospital as a physiotherapist. And that was in Eastern Cape, outside of Tata. But that was good because I learned how people live. I learned what it means to be in a village. Uh, there were years where we didn't know how to come to the end of the month. We didn't know how to get ourselves even, yeah, uh, our living conditions were bad. Um, but because we were having the right vision, the right goal and the right people to work with, um, it is now that we did Utungati for the last 15 years. Many people in his position would have thrown in the towel. I feel always as long as I have that, uh, the ideas 
and the drive to find the solution for the pe individual people we are meeting. So because of that I think I can yeah, be touched, be sad, be discouraged, but if you find ideas to make that life different and then a few weeks later you come there and that person is smiling, that person sitting in, a sitting in a wheelchair, the child starts crawling, um, that motivates. Andreas says his main goal is to unleash the potential of people living with disabilities. So you start on research, you go, awareness campaign, home-based care, sponsorship, community-based rehabilitation and then community-based rehabilitation leads into that people have to do something. And that is our sustainable economic development, like a greenhouse tunnel, we have a chicken farm, eggs and broiler chicken. So people with disabilities and community members work to make some income. And, uh, program for really everybody who had a stroke. Andreas has been working closely with Masawusa Piri since the inception of the project. Originally from Zambia, Masawusa and Andreas were worlds apart, but their compassion brought them together. There was uh, a situation uh, in near Port St. John's after Umtata where we went to a household uh, doing our home visits. And uh, it so touched me that upon, with us upon reaching that homestead, we saw somebody was in a chain uh, tied to a trunk. And yet, that person who was on the chain, all that he needed to was to be towed or be put in a room. Somebody had to look after him, but then because they said, no, he'll run away. Uh, that for me, on that uh, particular day, I really, you know, it really dawned unto me that, look, I want to be, uh, take up on this challenge. I would work with people uh, living with disabilities. Masawusa says it is this experience that changes career path from public administration to charity work. From the onset, when we had the uh, street kids that we were staying and uh, working, working with, we had created a, a sense of sponsorship uh, from individuals that would sponsor the kids to go to school and also to go for skills development because we knew that, you know, uh, for somebody who is a former street kid, uh, and has, having an opportunity of going to school. So we would want to have a situation whereby you build them so that when they complete school, they can also have a sense of, 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 mean, of meaning in life. Although Utongati has been running for 15 years, Masawusa says they've only scratched the surface compared to what they want to achieve. The bigger vision is actually to, to have a situation where, uh, obviously, uh, with our motto of, uh, of, of, of reaching out to more than a million people in Southern Africa. That is actually what we want to, to make sure that we achieve that. Uh, the Southern Africa will have a common situation in terms of how we work with disabilities, the synergies, uh, how the projects that we have, how they intertwine, that uh, people would learn what South Africa, what's best out of South Africa can be learned in Zimbabwe, in Namibia, in Zambia, uh, in Tanzania, in Zimbabwe, so as to have that common goal and help with the challenges that people with disabilities are facing. Looking back, what's that? Move forward, move up, do better, accept no excuses, change the game, do it yourself, do it right, do it on your terms, because you never understood second or wasted one. Then, and only then, success becomes something to savor. Glen Brinth, the taste of success. Another q and team assuming COVID-19 duties. The way that we are going to fight against this pandemic that is spreading around the whole world is only in one way. Fidel Castro and Mandela showed us that way a long time ago. While scientists work tirelessly to make a COVID-19 vaccine available in the new future, in the meantime, we are urged to wash our hands, sanitize consistently and maintain social distancing. When we get information in WHO, we get information in numbers. This many people died or this many people had been infected. We don't see the numbers. We see the individuals behind the numbers. The mother of somebody, the father of somebody, the daughter of somebody, and the son of somebody, or the grandfather of someone. This 
virus is dangerous. This virus is public enemy number one. If we take this as a common enemy for humanity and give our best, we can win the fight. Welcome back to Stories Untold. When Andreas and Masawusa started Utongati 15 years ago, they had no idea how far this project would go. Let us now have a look at their work over the years. Bye bye, my cool. See you later. Gog Hilda Mutalebule came to Johannesburg from Mafikeng to look for greener pastures. After working as a domestic worker for many years, she found a job here at Utongati Disability Project. This has been her morning routine since joining the center in 2016. When she knocks off, she goes back home to her grandson, 24-year-old Dumelo, who is living with a disability. Dumelo suffered a stroke when he was just four months old. And every week, Masawusa and Andreas pay him a visit. And then, tala, 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 Yes, okay. Since Dumelo's mother is no longer alive, Gogo has assumed the responsibilities of being a mother, grandmother, and provider. A lone wolf, this has been her life for the most part. Her heart in next Mashishaka. Since I feel it's a Huna, Kimuchagan, Saki, Samaya, Alimuniad, Mara, Kimuch, a bomb of Chagara, give up with her no one of Akis. Mara's given to Scandix. Mara Fera Ukola Grant. Impata, what for Mara? Yamu is. A pain and struggle that Gogo has had to endure, but the project has made it easier to bear. Fifty-six-year-old Hazel Maseba is also a beneficiary of Utongati. Hazel has been bedridden for the last 16 years. In 2013, Hazel was introduced to the project. It's like they're paying black tax. <laughs> Like before, before I, 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 I was introduced to Utonga, I, I was so depressed. Hey? I, I, you know, I, it was difficult for me to accept my condition, but they made it so easy. Like before I met Utonga, I was just existing. You know, I was, I felt just like a statistic. She says her life has changed for the better since she came in contact with Utongati. They helped me with um, 
exercises and um, they help me with uh, occupational therapy because uh, what they do as soon as they found out that I, I, I used to, to do some sewing and stuff and then they started encouraging me I never thought it was possible for me to to do my sewing while I'm bed bound but I, I'm, I'm doing it already and um, another thing they helped me with uh, vegetables fresh vegetables see my new table mm. I like it <laughs> massages exercises all this stuff and um Utongat even bought me a machine can you see it it's, it's my new singer machine 7000 rand I thank them for my life. I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for them for this long. And I want them, I want to thank them for, for, for even caring for my son. Her son recalls the days when his mother felt helpless. It almost happened whereby she tried to take her life. So that was around it also affected me a lot because I had to help your mother. Always be like cautious. We would see if events are gonna come around. We think that we prevent. Yeah. So it somehow it, it it made me a better person because I I, I learned to be responsible. But now he's proud of her and the progress she has made. Yes. It makes me smile. If you travel, then I was with Chabula, but then if I got Chabula, and then that's a struggle with this Chabula because of the condition of it. The Utongati project also empowers people living with disabilities to become self sufficient through entrepreneurship. Why is it important for the public to get involved in this discussion? Virtually all municipalities are putting in uh, bids to have their salaries increased. Councillors and, and municipalities around the country are oblivious to the fact that there's a pandemic out there that has created economic havoc in this country. How does Salga respond to that? There is no municipal that has asked for an increase. We have then said to councillors, a council will sit, look at the gazette that has been provided, and it provides an upper limit of 4% for this current financial year for public representatives. We're trying to say to the municipalities is get in touch with reality. You cannot simply sit back and say it's business as usual. Many of our councillors have taken that and we have seen how they've made a contribution by responding to the current call of the president. Coming up on Stories Untold. We are looking at how the easing of the lockdown regulations has offered some kind of relief to people living with disabilities. Since then, After working in the hospital there as a physical therapist again, I realized I should start a program where people in very rural or remote areas in the Eastern Cape should get services in physical therapy and holistic social attention and get people out. Catch stories untold this Saturday at 5.30 p.m. In so far as it makes it impossible for candidates to stand for political office without being members of political parties, the Electoral Act is unconstitutional. With this, this judgment, I believe that we have put as South Africans on an equal footing. What was started in 1994, there were pieces that were missing, and we believe that today, some of those pieces have been put together. Political parties must actually recognize this as a way of freeing themselves because some of them got captured in the process. What this means is that Parliament will have to find a mechanism to facilitate the participation by uh, individual candidates in national and provincial elections. As a commission, we stand ready to work with Parliament
Welcome back to Stories Untold. Unemployment remains one of the biggest challenges for people living with disabilities. Their inclusion into the broader economy is at the heart of organizations such as Utongati. Let us see how they are closing the gap. Andreas and Masausa founded Utongati Disability Project back in 2005. The project also empowers its members by equipping them with skills that help them to be self-sufficient. The center also has vegetable gardens and chicken farming in Johannesburg and the Eastern Cape. Working here at the garden is 47-year-old Zakaria Lote. In 2012, Zakaria suffered spinal tuberculosis. This condition came with complications that hindered his walking ability. Being a part of ETV, uh, his spine TB, so tongue affect and cause a cerebral infection. My father came in 2014. Then I'm going to introduce the Kaya Tungati, the Kaya, then I'm going to go to Konada. Since then, I'm going to go to the Fijo, I'm going to go to the Olympic. I'm going in terms of physically, physically, not a kind stress set like a man, all the time. A father to three boys, he's always had to make sure that they don't go a day without food. Not only an employee here, but Andreas and Masawusa have also given him freedom to sell what he sows. Also employed at the center is 43-year-old Colin Magafani. Colin was hit by a car at the age of seven and his life was never the same. After his mother's passing, he relocated to Johannesburg, a move that led him to this job. Next, 
I will never leave support and then I don't want to give up again. This is Rendani in Tangeni. He started working here as an intern and he's now the center's project coordinator. Disability is not a sector which is like out there. You do not get six-year-olds saying, when I grow up, I want to become a person working in the disability field because it's not as talked about or known as such. Looking back, Rendani couldn't have had it any other way. It firstly conscientizes you. You become more aware of situations and life outside of your own little world. You, you learn to relate a little bit better with people and to be more under, understanding of people's circumstances. And you, you just become a whole full person with so much experiences in terms of that, that life is not always the same for everyone and opportunities that people are dealt with are not the same. We are part of this community where we, we pass along stereotypes to our kids, our nieces and nephews and ignorance is one of the biggest problems. So just ask. Ask, communicate and be open and be open-minded and be willing to learn. Don't just assume. Every single day for each and every one of us is a learning is, is a learning cap. Uh, for instance, people who do put up fancy buildings, do all this uh, infrastructure development, but then they'll always miss a thing or two of say a person with a wheelchair, how does a person with a wheelchair enter this building? Uh, but then you don't blame people saying no you should have done that or you could have done that, but you kind of mention it so that they can learn. Andrea's dreams of providing support throughout Southern Africa, but for now it is one step at a time. So it's more like a Gauteng area in the Eastern Cape. Uh, we were out in Umtata, now we are in Queenstown, Lady Frey area, and we are in Zambia, in the Southern Province. So with the stuff we have, and with the financial resources we have, that's what we can handle now. And with that, we end our show here for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to contact Utongati, you can go to www.utongati.org.za. Alternatively, find them on social media at Utongati across all the platforms. From myself, Pule Mulebati, and the rest of the Stories Untold team. Goodbye.